Hello guys, today let's talk about deployment in Laravel and a few days ago I made a survey on my Twitter and on YouTube and I got a lot of answers and let's talk about them. How do you deploy Laravel projects? First, what was a survey? It was a really short three question survey. I intentionally didn't put any options of like checkboxes or radio buttons. It was all text based answers which meant it took a lot of time for me to calculate all of those things. But I think the answers are more correct with a lot of details. So three questions. What server provider do you use or several? How do you deploy in a few sentences? And what tools help you to deploy? On average, the system showed that it took two minutes to reply to the survey. So let's take a look at the results. I got 447 responses, which was a shock to me. I didn't even expect 100. So it was 274 from my Twitter and 173 from my YouTube audience. And still, it's not a huge amount of responses, so it represents only my audience, so my followers. So those answers may be different if you conduct a survey more broadly, but still, I think it's pretty accurate representation of the market. So among other questions that we will discuss is the answer to those three questions, but we will dig a bit deeper specifically on shared hosting. And from your answers, I will give my own comments and also will raise questions to you. So below this video, please be active and add comments to help other developers who struggle. You will see that from this presentation. And let's go to the numbers. First, most popular server providers. By far, the leader is DigitalOcean. Then if we don't take into account shared hosting, number two is AWS. Also, there were a lot of just general VPS and your local providers depending on the country. So I grouped them all together into this. And then around 8% of you are self-hosting your projects. Also, there were providers that were mentioned as well, but with lower numbers. Hetzner and Linode, those were the two that got at least 20 votes. And with 10 or less, there was Google Cloud Platform, OVH, Vulture. Everything else was less than five votes. Now let's spend some time discussing this number, which was pretty shocking to me. I didn't expect that almost 25% of you use shared hosting, but I dig deeper. Out of those 114 people, apparently almost half of them do have SSH access. So shared hosting doesn't necessarily mean uploading via FTP. So that's already good news. They use Git and they use SSH just on a shared hosting environment. And then there's another number, 25% of those people use shared and VPS. And down below you see some answers like an example. So you use DigitalOcean, but for smaller projects, shared hosting is enough. Also mention smaller apps dependent on project needs. So it seems that some of you choose shared hosting or VPS depending on the project. So you're at least familiar with deploying on non-shared hosting environment. That is good. So real people using only shared hosting and deploying only via FTP is not that big in the end. But I still think we need to help those people to learn better deployment structure. And the next slide is quotes from how do they deploy to that shared hosting. If you don't have SSH, if you don't use Git, basically there are three methods. First, zip archive and unzipping on the server. Second is using FileZilla to just transfer the file, the file that you have changed, or manually adding the files to shared hosting via some kind of panel. So a lot of those shared hosting panels give you access to the file, so you can click edit there and edit that directly. I know it sounds pretty risky, but from your answers, some people do that. But you know what? That's okay. I'm not here to judge. Let's dig a bit deeper. Another few answers from shared hosting people about database. And this part, I think, makes shared hosting deployment more risky. So uploading the files or extracting the files, it's kind of okay. But it's pretty hard to make the database consistent without having migration files and importing database from somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what it means import DB here. Probably it's for the first deployment. So you import the structure first time. But then what? What if you have to add a new field? So you go to phpMyAdmin and add a new field. It's quite a big risk to lose some data, to break some data for the customers. So be careful with that. Also, there were a few people having mixed approach to shared hosting deployment. So for example, push the feature by FTP and then SSH into the server and then run some commands. So they do have SSH access, but they don't use Git for some reason. Or another example where they do use Git and do have access, but shared hosting environment requires some changes like public HTML folder, changing the bootstrap file or some more details. Also, there's a mixed approach with tools like Git FTP, for example. 
Another thing that surprised me a lot, people who are using DigitalOcean don't use Git. There were at least five people doing that. So they do have DigitalOcean, which means they have SSH access, but they haven't configured Git and still use FTP or uploading or unzipping. And the last comment summarizes it all. They were unsuccessfully trying to install Git and configure Git on DigitalOcean and then went back to the FTP deployment even when using SSH. So in summary for shared hosting, these are my thoughts of reasons why people use shared hosting. Usually it's either cost, so shared hosting is a bit cheaper in most cases, and if the project size and project budget doesn't allow to pay like $5 or $10 more per month, and if the project is really simple, like almost like personal website for something, why would you bother to install Git doing SSH if you have shared hosting already ready for usage? So that's one case. Another case is the amount of projects. If person is just starting, I guess, and has only one project to deploy, and also that's a personal project probably, or the client with small budget, for one project, if you are familiar with some shared hosting environment, why bother to use something more complex? But also, reason number three, because they don't know any better. They just haven't tried or tried and failed to use Git and dedicated servers. And here are two comments in that area that people actually wanted to use Git, but failed at that. So why don't we help them? I thought of two ways how we can help people still using shared hosting. First, if they want to use shared hosting, that is fine. And a few years ago, I had a very strong opinion against using shared hosting. But as that survey showed, there are pretty valid reasons why people use that and they don't want to move anywhere else. Okay, but then you can still use shared hosting, but configure Git for the version control to be able to use shared hosting in a more convenient way. Unfortunately, I don't have any advice around that. So please, in the comments, if you have any tutorials on how to configure Git on shared hosting environment, please share and let us help those people who want to set up Git on shared hosting but failed for some reason. What I can advise personally, if you have budget, try to move to dedicated server and probably the easiest way to do that is to use Laravel Forge and DigitalOcean combination. And here I've attached a few screenshots about pricing. So if you have one project, you can start with $12 a month for Laravel Forge and create one DigitalOcean droplet and I would advise $10 per month because with one gigabyte of RAM, you may run into issues with Composer. And I have faced that in the past. So at least two gigabytes of RAM is pretty necessary for Laravel projects. So minimum investment would be $12 plus $10, which would be 22. So if you can afford $22 per month, please try it out. You will probably not regret and you will be probably surprised how easy it is. That's why a lot of people use Laravel Forge and that survey showed that. Okay, enough about shared hosting. Let's take a look at the other side, which is VPS deployment or deployment on something like DigitalOcean or AWS or others. Almost one third of you, 29% of those who don't use shared hosting mentioned that they manually SSH into the machine and do git pull and other terminal commands. And probably that number is even higher realistically, just people didn't mention. Some of you answered just git push and I don't know if you do git pull manually or some automation. So that number of 29% is likely more than 40%, I would say. So another mission of this presentation is to help those people who do manually git pull to get familiar with some tools to help them. And speaking of the tools, here are the tools that you mentioned in the third question of what you do, what you use to help you to deploy. And Laravel Forge is number one by far. Then number two and three are for automation of all of that. And third group of deployer and voyeur and ploy is mostly for zero time deployment or a bit more convenient deployment without SSH into the machine. Also, as I mentioned below, there were a few more tools mentioned, but with lower amount of voids, Jenkins, Docker, Laravel, Envoy, and Kubernetes, they were all mentioned at least five times. And for those of you who are not familiar with Laravel Forge, here's an example how it works. So you can have a deploy script, which is this, in my example for LiveWire Kit. After you get pushed into the repository, you go to Forge visually and click Deploy Now. Then it executes all that script. So that script contains git pull, composer install, restarting FPM, and then migrate for the latest database changes. And you may configure that to even happen automatically. Enable quick deploy button means that whenever you push to that branch, whether it's develop branch or main branch or master branch, this script will launch automatically. This is pretty risky to enable on live servers, 
So we enable that in our team for staging servers. But if you do enable that, you don't even need to SSH or log in anywhere. You just do git push and it's deployed within a minute or so. So Laravel Forge is popular because it's actually two in one. First, it helps you to create a server. So you visually create a server, define the repository to attach to, then you can easily configure SSL certificate, queue drivers, and a lot of options. So just configuring the server like DigitalOcean is a breeze with Laravel Forge. And then the deployment process is also as easy as you can see on the screen. I have a few videos about Laravel Forge, how we use that in the team. Those videos are a bit older, but still the principle remains the same and I will link them in the description below. And then for deployment, there are other tools like instead of Laravel Forge or on top of Laravel Forge, what you've mentioned, Deployer.org is a free tool. So you need to manually install that into your server. Then Envoyer.io is official from Laravel, from Taylor Otwell, and it starts from $10 a month. And then there's also a new tool, relatively new. I called it Rising Star Ploy which you can start using for free because it's zero monthly for five deployments per month. So you can try it out for free. I'm not affiliated with any of those products. Personally, we use Envoyer for some of the projects. For others, we use just Laravel Forge. But I'm not advertising anything. I'm not affiliated with any of those. I'm just quoting what you mentioned in the survey results. If we talk about automating deployment with some unit tests running and some more stuff, all the major version control systems now offer that. The most popular now is GitHub Actions, which is probably the most recent one, but it gained a big popularity pretty quickly. Then GitLab CICD is pretty popular and Bitbucket Pipelines, surprisingly to me, was mentioned only a few times, so it's not popular in Laravel world. I actually generally see the fall of Bitbucket being used because in the past it was used as a free private repository tool and GitHub didn't allow that. And since it's changed, I think it was in 2019, then people migrated over to GitHub, which now takes, I think, like 80% of the market or even more. And finally, the last thing, I will just quote a few responses from you which contained some kind of emotion or emoji or smiley or something. So two examples here. I'm using FTP transfer and then sigh, which means I'd like to use non-FTP, but oh well. And also similar, zip upload and then sad smiley. I hope that this presentation and some of the comments maybe that you will share below this video will help such people. A few more funny examples was currently git push, blah, blah, blah. And then last word, pray. So basically I call it fingers crossed driven development. And then the last one, manual upload, extract, and then run. It didn't mention what to run, scripts or some commands. So probably it may mean just literally get up and run. <laughs> probably not, but I just added that as a good way to end the presentation. And the last funny comment was this. Some people like to live dangerously and work on live server. I remember around year 2000 where I started my career, we did that all the time. But I hope this presentation will convince that person or their managers to not do it this way. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, let's discuss again in the YouTube comments below. The link to that all presentation will be also in the YouTube video. And if you have any ideas for future presentations, it took a lot of time for me to summarize all of that. So I won't promise a lot of surveys like that. But if you have any ideas, let's share. And if you want more Laravel tips on this channel, you can support my work and the time that I spent by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now. And by purchasing one of them, you support me and my team. And then I have more time to do such surveys and publish daily videos on this channel. See you guys in other videos.